Hi, welcome to the Israel First television program with myself, Martin Blackham, and with my wife, Natalie Blackham. Great to have you with us wherever you're watching in the world. We really appreciate you joining us. Amazing that we can go live to you today from Jerusalem, from the land of Israel, and bring you news and interviews and current events and current affairs. And today's program, we have a special program dedication for this. This program is, de is a dedicated, and the program today is dedicated to David Lewis, uh, who uh, was the husband of Catherine Lewis, has sadly passed away. He loved Israel, and uh, he stayed away from churches that teach replacement uh, theology, very wise. Uh, and so we dedicate it to David and to his memory. And uh, as they say in Israel, may his memory be a blessing. Now, uh, in the news, uh, of, uh, people have been watching Israel very much because of the uh, war, particularly uh, in Gaza, started by Gaza terrorists. And um, we'll be looking uh, on the program a bit of what's happened the whole week. So we'll try and bring you new uh, the stories of the week. Uh, Israel again. This was one of the stories of the week, battered by Gaza rocket barrage, resulting in one dead and multiple injuries. And at the time of this story, there was over 2,000 rockets launched at Israel since the start of hostilities from Gaza. Uh, the IDF called, called up 7,000 reservists and prepared for a possible ground invasion of the Gaza Strip. By the way, now, Plans... now we have 4,000 rockets. Over, yeah, we're, over we're, we're, what we're going to do is have a look at the news as it happened over the week. So okay. it will increase the rocket. Okay. Okay. The amount of rockets will increase. Uh, the plans were presented uh, last Thursday to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Sa South and central Israel came under a heavy barrage of rockets fired from the Gaza Strip late th last Thursday night. Some 190 rockets were launched into Israel from Gaza, with 30 uh, falling into the Gaza Strip. The Iron Dome managed to intercept dozens of the rockets. However, some made it past, uh, which is uh, always the problem in uh, for, uh, hitting neighborhoods and causing injuries in the south of Israel. Hamas claimed to have launched over 100 rockets into the south at Ashdod and Ashkelon. One rocket landed in Ramli and set a field on fire. Islamic Jihad uh, threatened late Thursday that it prepared to launch additional salvos against Israel. The fresh barrage came as the IDF prepared for a possible ground invasion into Gaza and upped its airstrikes against Hamas and other terror groups in the Gaza Strip. On Thursday, the military called up 7,000 reservists uh, on Thursday evening, Defence Minister Benny Gantz, this is last week, authorised the IDF to call up an additional 9,000 reservists as needed in accordance with operational requirements. The reservists will come from the combat units and command uh, centre operations and would serve in the Central Command and Northern Command so that soldiers regularly stationed there could be sent on other missions. Earlier in the day, the IDF called up Reservists serving in artillery, Iron Dome batteries, doctors, paramedics, IAF, uh, intelligence and other combat units. Another Iron Dome battery was also added to those placed around the country. Combat troops will also be able to leave, uh, not also, they won't be able to leave their bases and additional ground troops have been redeployed to the border ahead of a possible ground operation, including from the Paratroopers Brigade, Galani Infantry Brigade and 7th Armoured Brigade. On Thursday afternoon, dozens of long-range rockets fired in the direction of central Israel, including Tel Aviv and as far south as Elat. Several people were injured. An 87-year-old wo uh, woman suddenly died on Thursday night after she was injured on her way to a shelter during a rocket siren. Yeah, this is the problem, isn't it? Because quite often when I look at the report of Magen David Adom, it's a lot of people who are injured because obviously they are panicking and they are falling and they are hurting themselves. By the way, there was an old lady, 92. You can imagine you are 92 and you have like to run fast because when you're in the south, us, we have like... Um, I can't remember now. We have uh, almost a minute, I think. But for them, it's like 20 seconds. Again, it depends where they are. Some is very, the one who are obviously close to Gaza, they don't have very much time to run. And further field you are, 
longer time you have to run. So you can imagine when you are older, and 82 is the age of, uh, of my mother, is I can imagine the, the trauma, first of all, and then when you run, sometimes you can just uh, fall and, and hurt yourself, and, and, a, and a lady died. She, she hurt her head and she, and she died. A 50-year-old also was, a uh, man was injured, critically injured in Ashkelon following a barrage on the city. On Friday, Israeli press reported, Magan David Adam Israel's National Ambulance and Emergency Service said that they have treated over 500 people since the rocket fire began. Uh, on a, a week ago on Monday. Seven people have been killed since a week ago on Monday. As I say, this is news coming in and it will keep, we'll keep updating it. New, nearly 400 people were injured as a result of rocket fire whilst uh, over 160 people were injured in clashes in riots. Uh, IDF spokesman Brigadier General uh, Hedy Zilberman said on Thursday that a ground invasion remained a viable option. And uh, after a large barrage of rockets towards central and southern Israel on Thursday afternoon, Abu Abedeh, spokesman of Hamas military wing, claimed that the group was launching rockets in the direction of Ramon Airport using the 250 IS rocket, which he claimed had a, re a range of 250 kilometers. So I have to say, the Ramon uh, Airport is the one who is in the south. After the barrage, the Hevel Elliott Regional Council, located in the southern Negev, announced that a rocket of had hit uh, in their area. No injuries were reported. Now, if you were watching the programme last week, you will have said, well, Martin, you promised to um, talk to us about the days of Noah. And so uh, you're not going to want to miss any of this. We're going to be looking, Natalie, mm -hmm. today at monsters, dragons and uh, giants. I just wanted to, to add one thing that I read this morning, which is quite important because we speak about what's happening in the Gaza uh, area, but you have also to know that there is still some riots in Ramle, in Lod, a bit also in Haifa, and there is some Jewish people who went to Lod, especially this week, to stand with the Jewish people. You have to understand it's a mixed city. So Arab and Jewish people are living usually well together, but right now, because of all the tension, the there is some Arab people who are going close, um, Muslim, I would say, who are uh, hunting some Jewish people. The synagogues have been damaged. Um, and again, I heard from one rabbi from Tzfat who went to Lod and look a bit at the situation over there and said the police is not doing enough. So you need to know that there is still, and please carry on praying. And we know that there is a lot of darkness who are trying to really unsettle Israel and what's happening in the world. So this is all part of the big fight between darkness and light because we know that the Messiah is coming uh, soon and Martin has some things to say about that, isn't he? Yeah, uh, Matthew 24, 37, 39 says, As in the days of Noah, so it shall be at the coming of Messiah. So Matthew 24 is the, is the main thing we're looking at. But, um, you know, one of the important things in the middle of everything is uh, Genesis 3, uh, 15, which says, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. You know, there's an issue of, of a corruption of the seed. And uh, Genesis 6, uh, 4 says, there were giants on the earth in those days. And also afterwards, when the sons of God came to the daughters of men. So it mentions giants in the Bible. You know, we sometimes think, uh, you know, this is uh, folklore or uh, myths or rumours. And I want to refer us... To, uh... There is a passage also, when you, when you speak about that, it reminds me uh, when, when Israel was going to... I mean, the Hebrew people were just in the desert and were going to the land. Mm -hmm. The spies say, we saw giants. So they were real. It was actually people in Canaan who was living, who they were, were giants. The giants were real, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I want to refer us to this book and then just quickly get that on the screen. It says, uh, the book of Noah, uh, sorry, the book of Enoch. Uh, it's the days of Noah, that's what it is. Yeah. I was right in the first, in a sense, uh, it is the book of Enoch opens up the days of Noah. Now, uh, the book of Enoch is not uh, in the Bible. It's not a, a, a biblical 
book, but it's a very important book in the days we're living in, and it's highly historical re- book. Yes, and it's not just historical; it's for now. You know, it's not just part of history, but it's it's a book which is relevant for today. Why is it relevant for today? Well, you know, we have a limited history uh, of what happened in the days of Noah in uh, Genesis, but the book of Enoch. Let me just get that up again. You're going to want to get this. The book of Enoch um, opens up the days of Noah. It explains what was happening. And uh, as I said, in Genesis 6, 4, it talks about giants on the earth in those days. But there's another important bit of that scripture, which you'll need to know. And it says, and afterwards, so there were giants on the earth. And afterwards, when the sons of God came to the daughters of men and bore children to them, who are the sons of God? These are the fallen angels, the the watchers, they call them in the book of Enoch. So let's get straight into that. And uh, you're really going to want to you know, make notes about this. It says in the book of Enoch, the watchers are angels dispatched to the earth to look over humans. They soon began to lust for human women and at the instructions of their leader defected en masse to illicitly instruct humanity and procreate amongst them. The offspring of these unions are the Nephilim. You've read about the Nephilim. Savage giants who pillaged the earth and endangered humanity. When I say endangered humanity, they 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 kill people. They kill people on mass. The te- the teach they taught humans new technologies that would otherwise be gradually discovered over time and not all at once. According to the Book of Enoch, the Watchers, the sons of God of Genesis, are clearly celestial, non-human beings whose actions are regarded not only as morally evil but spiritually destructive. The book of the watchers describes the revolt of the heavenly watchers, which leads to evil on the earth. And we were talking about this a few programs ago, but it's very interesting um, for Christians. If you say where the if you ask them about the origin of evil uh, after thinking, some of them may refer you to uh, Adam and Eve and the 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 sin that uh, came and the, the fall of man. But many Jewish people, if you ask them. Where does the the origin of evil? They would refer you to the days of Noah, to the uh, watchers. It's very and to the Nephilim, right? Yeah. The Nephilim, the watchers. Nephilim. Watchers. By, by the way, in Hebrew, Nephal is to fall. So we can speak about the fallen angel. And some people say also when the the the, the giant had trouble, also to they weren't agile. Um, so they were like falling like Goliath when he was running. He couldn't run properly. So. Again, in, very interesting when you speak about the, the battle of Goliath and David, this was again a battle between darkness and light because Goliath was a giant, okay, was with the Philistine, but it's all part of these things. So we, we really have to understand now that we are coming into the last days and that there is a fight between darkness and light. And you know the, the the we think of giants. Some some of us may think of them as friendly giants. You know, there's the book, the the big friendly giant. But they were not friendly giants. They were evil, and uh, <clears throat> they were morally they were morally evil, spiritually destructive. And uh, you know, we talk about monsters. They were not just giants, but they were monsters and dragons. And the book of the Watchers describes uh, the revolt of the heavenly watchers, which leads to evil on the earth. And foretells of God's judgment. The watchers produced giants on the earth by their union with human women. And these giants were evil. Now, uh, it's all about the mixture of DNA. You know, we talk about the seed. Remember the seed? I, I mentioned that in Genesis. And we think about that. Your seed and uh, uh, your seed will attack his seed. Well, what, what are we talking about? Well, the seed is the, the seed, seed of, of the snake. The seed of the snake or the serpent or we'll the be devil. the seed of the woman. Right, of the evil one. will be against the seed of God, which was coming through Adam. Now, uh, in chapter 6 to 16 of the Book of Watchers, it tells the story of the angels who saw that the daughters of men were fair and descended from heaven. So it actually explains what happened. They were, were celestial beings. They were angels created by God and they descended from heaven and began to take as their wives and begot children for them. Uh, According to one Enoch, the sons of God of Genesis 6-2 were the angels, the watchers, 
They lusted after the beautiful and comely daughters of men. Their leader, Shemazai, and he has a name, persuaded them to swear an oath together to descend to the earth and take human women as wives and beget children. Now, it's very interesting, you know, because I, I mentioned at the beginning about uh, giants, monsters, and dragons. And you know that one of the names, Natalie, in the Bible for the devil is that ancient dragon. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. That's one of his names. Now, the sins of the sons of God, or watchers included, now listen to this, the transmission of knowledge forbidden to human beings. One watcher, Asael, was condemned as a teacher of the eternal mysteries in heaven, made them known to men. How on earth could they have had all this technology, gene-changing technology, DNA-changing technology, if they had uh, you know, been primitive? They must have had it from somewhere, just as it is around today. And that's why it's around today, and it's in happening all around the world, and we have this injectable. So everything, there's this DNA is very, very serious, the changing of the DNA. Because now, the, the seed is the, is the image of God in us, right. the DNA that God has given us. And it's interesting because what you are saying is like this, this uh, heavenly uh, created, by the mm -hmm. way, being... Uh, they are not at all like the creator. They they were jealous of men because mm -hmm. God really loved human being. He loved Adam and Eve and all the descendants. And he wanted to bring his holiness on earth, which was not like in heaven where there was his holiness. So he wanted to bring more of his holiness in our world and and the, the other uh, creators, of spiritual cre cre created beings that that God has created before and rebel against him, they, they really fight, they, they came to fight here because they didn't want to see God's holiness and the love that God had for his people, which is, I think, very important to and know that's, that. That's just what I'm coming on to, funny enough. The goal of the right. fallen angels, their goal, their mission, their job was to destroy everything that God made. Very strange, but that was their mission. They were also, listen to this, genetically mixing animals, plants, and humans together. Animals, plants, and humans together. More evidence of the genetic uh, manipulation comes from the sixth book, of Enki. Now, there's a lot of ancient there's a lot of ancient literature about this, and in the book of Enki, it says to a place where the trees Nimna he directed a place of cages. It was in the cages were odd creatures, there like 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 in the wild, no one had ever seen. Four parts of one they they had, hind parts of another creature they possessed. Creatures of two kinds by their essences combined to Nimna. And he was showing ancient literature and artwork is full of examples of creatures that are part one creature and part another as well as giants. So this is, you know, this is in our folklore. This is in our history uh, of many countries. Now, many of you watching today will know in your own folklore that there are history of giants, monsters and dragons. I mean, you know, in China, for example, the dragon is a very important symbol. Now, the giants, violence and voracious hunger caused humans tremendous distress. The final result of all this illicit angelic intervention is the flood to get rid of this contamination. Now, one of the things in the book of, of Enoch, uh, which you're really going to find very interesting, is it says about the end time. All the earth, this is what will happen in the end time, all the earth will be cleansed of evil and wickedness. All peoples will worship God and everyone will live in peace in uh, for eternity. This is 1 Enoch 10 to 21, 11 to 2. Now, one of the interesting uh, things is, Natalie, is that it's like an attack on the earth. And you think, well, that's not so important because we've always been taught, well, the earth is not so important. It's only eternity. It's only heaven. Um, but, you know, one of the things that uh, Yeshua said, Jesus said, was that Thy kingdom come on earth. Mm -hmm. Your kingdom come on earth. As it is in heaven. And this is very interesting what you are saying because like, uh, studying what I discover, which is a very important foundation that we haven't been conscious of that, which is exactly what you are saying. God is reigning in heaven. But what he wants, he wants to see 
the world here on earth. He wants the heaven coming here, which is exactly the prayer that Jesus was saying. Okay? And so he wants, okay, to say it also in another way, he wants to bring his holiness in this place. Now, one thing that I've learned, which is amazing and beautiful, is that when the Jewish people eat and they, they bless God when they are eating, they bless God, by the way, at the beginning, not saying thank you for what we are eating, but like saying thank you. Oh, sorry, they, they said it twice. They, they bless the bread and they bless the wine. And at the end of the meal, they say thank you for what you are giving. But when, when they are saying for the bread, they are saying thank you for what you are bringing from the earth. Okay? So when we eat our bread, which is just a vegetable, and it comes into our body, this, what we are eating, is elevated because we are more than just vegetables. And we are more than animals because we are the one who are speaking. Again, this is another way that we, we have to look. You have the stones, you have like the elements, you have the vegetables, you have the animals, the uh, rains, and then you have the one who are speaking, which is us. So when the animals, when we eat the animals, again, they are lifted up and sanctified in one way because we are higher than them. And the vegetables are sanctified when they are eating by the animals and or eating by us, like when we eat our bread. So we are so precious, we are so amazingly made in the image of God and God is bringing all his nature and all the things he wants to sanctify it through us, which is amazing, and is we can elevate the world. Now, we can see when we eat is a holy act. I never thought about that, but it's like, it's a new way, you know, when I'm learning things with the Jewish people, and I think it's very important. So the, the, this human, these creatures in heaven uh, detest us, really. They, they hate us. And it's because of that, all this fight, all this darkness, all this war, they want to destroy us in one way or another, scientifically, with war, and, and, and like also the Freemasonry, we know that they don't they, they are worshiping lucifer and lucifer is satan satan is uh, the dragon you know he has all different names yeah and uh, if you're interested uh, in the book of uh, enoch or uh, you've been studying this all the days now let us know please do let us know wherever you're watching in the world uh, that you that you have done some research because this is a big topic and um, you know that uh, it's, a, it's a new thing really in one way because whilst there's a lot of information on the internet um, you know we've it's the first time we've attached it to the end times but it's 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 you th in a way it's kind of obvious because Jesus said as in the days of Noah mm -hmm. so if we want to know what the end times will look like the picture of the end times then we need to Look at the uh, Genesis, look at the book of Enoch, look at what was happening, look at, looking at all this manipulation of DNA and all these different things. Now, uh, I did have to mention, and I won't forget, um, uh, Robbie and the, uh, a very good friend, Zion's Bridge in the USA, has asked to mention that uh, if you'd like to support us in the United States and the work we're doing, then you can do that through Zion's Bridge. That's available on our website. You'll also be able to get a, a tax uh, receipt for the United States. So go to the go to the donor page. On the donor page, you'll see uh, U.S. donors, and there's all the information there. And uh, if you've got any difficulties whatsoever, do contact us. Um, now we'll come back to the news in Israel. We had a massive barrage on the south, and the south of Israel has really been. Uh, a difficult time for them. Sirens sounded in multiple locations across the country shortly after midnight. Late night salvo throughout, uh, continued and the throughout, a continuation of what's happened through the day. So the people in the South haven't had just rockets fired during the day and a rest at night. They've had them continually and you can imagine how that must be. Uh, many of the people in the South have had to live in the bomb shelter, have their meals in there because it becomes... It doesn't become worth moving out whilst this has been going on. 
An Israeli man was killed in the central city of Ramat Gan after Hamas fired a volley of close to 30 rockets at central Israel. So this is today? No, this is uh, one of the news stories of the week. Okay. And uh, th close to 30 rockets at central Israel, a large attack. This was on uh, Saturday, actually. Air raid sound sirens sounded in multiple Israeli cities, towns and communities Saturday night, including Tel Aviv, Bat Yam, Holon, Rishon Lezion, Herzliya, Bnei Brak, Lod, Givat Yim, Givat Shmuel, in the centre of the country, Ashdod, Ashkelon, Gan Yevne, Yad Mordecai, Nefrot, Ahalon, and the south. So, so it's the south and the centre right. and, uh, of, the, of the country. And on Saturday afternoon, an, an Israeli man was killed by a projectile that struck the Tel Aviv suburb of Ramat uh, Gan. According to Channel 12 TV News, the man did not have a protected area in his home and was unable to reach a bomb shelter in time. The outlet said that shrapnel from the rocket pierced the door to the man's house. Israel's National Ambulance and Emergency Service, Magan David Adam, reported at 12.45 a.m. Sunday morning that it had received reports of people who were shell-shocked. So there's not just uh, injuries from the rocket itself. There's not just injuries from people running um, to bomb shelters, but there's also... Uh, great suffering uh, uh, on the people of Israel, particularly in the south and the center. Oh, no. And but when when it's like that, you have to think that, like also the children, the old people I was speaking before, you know, it's like they are maybe even more sensitive, or sometimes it's difficult for them also to to really manage with stress. And and you know, uh, because yesterday I was feeling stress, and I was thinking, oh, why why is it like that? It's because it's not so far. And also because, you know, we say we are one body. When we are in a country, we really feel that if you have your finger hurt, all the body say, ouch, okay? And so it's no more that we feel all these things and we, we can feel the disturbance, we can feel the pain of the people and uh, carry on praying because it's important. And you know why? Because Israel is the apple of God's eyes. And so, again, when we look at the big picture, we know that Satan wants to have the Temple Mount. He wants to have the place, which is the place of the throne of God. And, and so he say he wants to be worshipped there. So he's doing everything to disturb the peace here. And when the heart, we spoke also about that, if the heart is sick or the body is sick, and, and Israel is the heart of the world, and even more Jerusalem. So we need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem because it's where the throne of God is, it's where he wants to come and dwell with us. And uh, we are praying also the Psalms, we are praying, uh, I've, I say that a few times, and uh, is some people have been contacted us and we will put it again under the video, will put how to get this uh, this book you know it's like the tehillim the psalms and the thing is it's like the the um, commentaries in it are so important and again this morning i was reading something it was the psalm it is the only thing who really encouraged me right now uh, deeply in my in my faith and to stay strong um, this was the Psalm 96, and it says, Sing to Hashem, to Adonai, a new song. Sing to Adonai, everyone on earth. And you, you can carry on uh, reading it. And they are saying, this will be also during the time of Messiah. Okay, we are coming into this time, and we need to know that. And like, praying the Psalms together is so important because it's lifting ourselves and uh, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's yeah. protecting and, our soul too. Mm. And uh, we've just had the holiday of Shavuot in Israel, which should be a, you know, a very festive time, and uh, people, families meet together. This is the big thing of Shavuot: is they, they have meals together uh, to celebrate the Shavuot, and um, people study the Torah, the Bible all night. And uh, unfortunately, a siren sounded as rocket attacks continued even over the Shavuot holiday. Uh, they, they, uh, sirens were blaring in the city of Ashkelon and Beersheba with two separate barrages at the city. So you can imagine that, you know, you have a family over and then suddenly you all have to rush to the bomb shelter and it's very, and with the children and it's very disruptive and, uh, you know, a, a frightening experience because these rockets 
um, you know, are made to kill people. And so you never know, you know. So that's why it's so important mm -hmm. to to run to your bomb shelter. The Hamas rocket barrages on the southern Israel continued Sunday uh, with almost 300 projectiles launched at Israel since Saturday, 120 on Saturday night alone. Rockets slammed into buildings in Ashkelon at Ashdod. In Ashkelon, a rocket had a direct hit on a synagogue. Um, you know that there's a and I, I thought I might get through some of the stories, but there's a lot of the stories of the rocket fire. And even as we've come in the studio today, Thursday, there's still rocket fire. This sadly, this morning, uh, we do do a up to date uh, um, news stories on our media page on the website. So go to the uh, click on to media, and click on news uh, from Israel. And um, if uh, you want to get in touch with us, don't forget, you can email us at info at israelfirst.org. Um, and uh, as I said, visit the website. There's a lot of information there, including uh, up-to-date news. You can see the latest programs that we've done. Share them with your friends and on YouTube. And um, remember that we are the program that looks at the land, the people and the language.